Hello, and welcome back to the Guide Gals podcast. It is just Chelsea today for a little solo episode, and it's going to be debunking some wedding budget myths. So if you have listened to our podcast before, you know that we like to talk about budgeting a lot. Uh, It's super, super important, and it's one of the biggest first steps that you can take when planning a wedding. So if you haven't listened to the podcast before, hey, welcome. I'm so happy you're here. Um, But I would love to recommend that you go and check out our episode library. Just before we get into it, I'd love to mention that because we have lots of of other episodes and some really great resources on creating a wedding wedding budget for yourself. So I'm going to go ahead and get into it. So wedding planning is of course a whirlwind. There's so much that goes into it and it can get a little bit overwhelming. So wedding budgeting sometimes does get overlooked and sometimes it can end up being on the top of your list of worries as well. So It's easy to get caught up in the countless myths that are surrounding wedding costs. So if you don't really dive into it and understand the process a little bit more, then, you know, these things can just end up being a little bit misleading. So I want to shed some light on the most common misconceptions and the reality of wedding budgeting. All right, so the first myth that I want to touch on is that you can barter your way to a cheaper wedding. So this is going to be like that idea of swapping goods or services that wedding, it might seem appealing, okay? It's, It's rarely practical though. So There might be some rare instances where a unique skill set aligns perfectly with like vendor needs and professionals running businesses and trading favors. Um, But what you're working with when you're planning a wedding are a bunch of businesses and a lot of them are small businesses or even like solo run operations. So the idea of asking for a trade of services or, you know, bartering your way down to, you know, maybe a smaller version of what their package is offered is probably not going to be received very well and probably will not work out for you. (laughs) Um, So What you have to do, in my opinion, is when you see a package price for a florist, for example, is you have to look at that as the cost of the goods. So when you go into the store, uh, you wouldn't necessarily go and, you know, try to barter for apples at the grocery store. Or even if you stay in a hotel, you wouldn't try to barter for, you know, the room that you're renting. So You have to think of these wedding vendors in the same way. So yes, we are calling it a myth for sure that you can barter your way to a cheaper wedding. It's it's just really, it's not a good way to approach um, your wedding planning. Okay, the second myth that I am going to talk about is that wedding vendors overcharge just because they can. So, of course, weddings are expensive. They're so expensive and costs everywhere across the line in the wedding industry and pretty much in every industry, unfortunately, are rising. It's no secret. um, Stuff just seems to be getting more expensive. So a lot of people may not exactly see all of the ins and outs behind the scenes of what the different wedding vendors deal with or you know what their unique costs are so it is a common belief that wedding venues or wedding vendors will tack on extra costs just because they can so it's true that some vendors might have higher prices Um, these could be due to factors like demand um, reputation and you know their skill set but the reality is that weddings often require really specialized services and resources so an example for this is that caterers deal with large quantities of food um, specific dietary restrictions and unique presentation requirements so all of these different factors will contribute to the overall cost so There are a lot of things to think about um, when it comes to this. And of course, so if you want someone with, you know, a really high demand or a really wonderful reputation or someone who has just a really vast amount of experience, you can probably expect to pay a little more. Um, But another thing to, you know, consider is that there's a lot of equipment involved for maybe those more technical, um, 
vendors in the, in the industry. So if you think about photographers or videographers, you know, we love to talk about that a lot. Um, but they have lots of equipment that they use from, you know, their cameras to their editing equipment. And a lot of these vendors as well, aside from photographers, videographers, but every vendor in the industry, their work goes far beyond just the day of your wedding. So you might think, you know, it's, you know, it, it's one day. How can it cost so much? But there are so many hours that these vendors will put in aside from the actual day of your celebration to make your vision come to life. Uh, so yes, uh, a lot of vendors do not or vendors do not overcharge just because they can. I think that a lot of vendors have, of course, your best interest in mind. But no, I we do not believe that people are overpriced just because they can be. Okay, myth number three is one that I am personally passionate about, and this one is that DIY is always cheaper. Okay, people, like, I have fallen victim to so many DIY projects, not necessarily wedding related per se, but I mean, I've been on Pinterest or Instagram or wherever, and I've seen something really cool that someone makes, and I'm like, oh my gosh, so easy, I'm so capable of that. I, you know, go to the craft store, I pick up my supplies, I try to make it happen and it turns out like garbage and I've spent a whole bunch of money on all of these supplies and now I have like glue everywhere and it's a disaster and I should have just purchased the item already created for me, whatever it may be. So DIY projects, okay, I do love them. They can add a personal touch and they do have the possibility to save you some money, but you have to really weigh the costs and the benefits. So another big, big point here is that time is a really valuable resource. So it's really easy to say like, oh, you know what? I can just do that myself or I can just do that myself or whatever. And maybe these DIY things that you're thinking of incorporating for your wedding are things that you can very easily achieve. But if you are planning your wedding while you have a full-time job or while, you know, maybe you're, you're a parent and you have kids, you have other responsibilities going on in your life. It is so easy if you create a DIY to-do list to end up completely drowning in that to-do list and maybe not having all of the hours to accomplish those things. Or if you do have all of the hours, maybe you've gone insane trying to do it. So you don't necessarily probably want to be spending countless hours crafting centerpieces, baking your own wedding cake. Oh my gosh, that sounds like such a nightmare. Um, so yeah, especially aside from all of your personal things, you're going to be juggling other wedding planning tasks. So DIY projects, they often require lots of supplies and equipment those things really can add up like like I mentioned like me going to the craft store and buying a bunch of individual items it might even end up costing the same amount as if you bought it new or whatever you're trying to do or if you just paid someone else to create it so what I like to say is approach DIY with some major caution okay it's it's really a, a wonderful thought in theory but I would put a little bit of extra consideration there and keep in mind that maybe, maybe, not always, maybe it'll be a little bit cheaper. You might be able to save a couple bucks, but you might also, you know, be ripping out your hair at the end of the process as well. Okay, the next myth is that off-season weddings are always cheaper. So while it's true that off-season weddings can offer some cost savings, it's not always guaranteed. So venues and vendors, they might offer discounts, but others might not. Additionally, popular destinations or venues might still have high demand during off-peak seasons. So it's really essential to research and compare prices to find the best deals. So it is really true, though, that you can find Great deals in off season. It really depends, um, you know, regionally where you are. A lot of times, if you're planning something where the weather might not be as ideal in a certain time of year than others, you might be able to catch a really nice deal. But it's really important that you don't necessarily count on that everywhere you go. So this is going to be something that's just going to take a little bit of extra research and some question asking. Like I said, you can always 
we encourage you to ask lots of questions um, to your wedding venue and your vendors, you know, ask, 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 and make sure that, you know, before you are committing to anything that you know exactly what you're in for, exactly what the costs are, and making sure that that really aligns with the wedding budget that I know that you created before you really dove into your planning process, just like we recommend. Okay, myth number five and the final budgeting myth that I'm going to talk about today is that destination weddings are automatically more expensive. So, Destination weddings can actually be more affordable than traditional weddings. And this this depends on a lot of things, okay? So it'll depend on your guest count, the location, and what amenities you want to choose. So travel and accommodations are factors. You might save on venue rental though and catering and decor costs. So it's crucial to carefully consider all of the expenses and create a realistic budget. So every wedding is unique and costs can vary significantly based on the location, the guest count, all of those different things. So yeah, destination weddings, they really seem like, ooh, that might be like a huge luxury. But a lot of times, once again, depending on what destination you're choosing, maybe even the time of year, once again, like all of those different things, a lot of, you know, destination options do have really great more so all-inclusive packages where this might offer an overall wedding cost that's a little bit more affordable. Like I said, you do have to think about travel and accommodations. So those things, of course, can add up and it might end up being a higher stress maybe instead of on you, the couple, on your guests that you're inviting because, of course, if you're inviting people to a destination wedding, it is a bigger ask to, you know, require them to travel and, you know, book accommodations where typically just a rule, general rule of thumb is that the guests coming will pay for their own travel expenses and accommodations. That's typically the way it goes. So, you know, things to think about, but destination weddings really are not automatically more expensive. Of course, there are a hundred thousand ways that you can make a destination wedding as expensive as you want to make it, but don't rule it out. If you're trying to plan a wedding that's a little bit more budget friendly, you don't have to automatically rule out destination weddings. So, Woohoo, really exciting. Um, I love destination weddings and I hope to be invited to one someday. So let me know. Those are all of the budgeting myths that I have for you today. So it's really important to set realistic expectations and prioritizing what matters most to you as a couple when you're thinking about planning. That is why, like I said, we really recommend diving into creating your wedding budget, being super detailed about this right at the top of your planning process. This is not something that you should wait on at all. You want to make sure that you have really good, realistic conversations with your partner right at the top. Get that out of the way so that way you are super comfortable and aware of exactly what you can spend and you don't get yourself you know, in over your head or you don't want to start your marriage off, of course, on a bad financial foot. So we have lots and lots of resources for you on our website, theguidegalspodcast.com. You can check out our, like I said, our resource library where we have lots of planning worksheets, budgeting stuff is in there as well, lots of that. And we have several episodes on budgeting. So you can check out our full episode library there. Um, But you can also find us on Instagram at the Guide Gals Podcast. We are on TikTok at the Guide Gals Pod. And then we do have all of our episodes in a video format on the Here Comes the Guide YouTube channel. This was a fun one. We love talking talking about budgeting in general. It is so, so important if you haven't, you know, figured out that we feel that way by now. Um, if you guys have any other wedding budgeting myths that you'd like to debunk or any other episode ideas, um, budget category or otherwise, please let us know. Please reach out to us on Instagram or through the contact page of our website. We'd love to hear from you guys and know if there's anything that you'd like us to talk about next. So... This was a fun one. Like I said, thanks for listening and being here with me today. And until next time, cheers. Cheers.